Just like wall tiles, floor tiles must be laid on a flat and sound surface. Any imperfections in the underlying surface will show up when the floor tiles are laid. Right. And this applies to any type of floor tile such as glazed ceramic, quarry tiles, natural stone or marble. Okay, so what sort of surfaces can I lay my floor tiles on? So long as the surface is secure, dry and level, you can lay floor tiles directly onto concrete or wood floors or onto vinyl tiles. Right. But be careful, floor tiles are heavy and if you're going to lay tiles onto a wooden floor, you may need to strengthen the floor first. Okay. So here's some guidance as to what you'll need to do to prepare a variety of floor surfaces. Concrete. Examine the general state of the surface by running a batten or straight edge over its surface. If the concrete floor is in a poor state, it may be easier to cure this with self-leveling compound rather than try to flatten and fill a surface with areas of cement mix. Don't worry about small cracks in the floor, but if the concrete floor is loose or crumbling, you'll have to hack this off and lay a new surface with self-leveling compound. Make absolutely certain there are no damp problems with the floor. Use a moisture meter or the polythene sheet technique to check for damp. If it's a new concrete floor, make sure it has dried out completely before tiling. Sweep or vacuum the concrete floor carefully and then clean with some detergent mixed in water. Wood. You may need to strengthen or level the timber floor by laying 13mm thick exterior grade plywood fixed down with either 25mm 4mm gauge countersunk screws or ring shank nails at 300mm intervals. Sweep or vacuum a wooden floor before tiling. Vinyl tiles. As long as they are flat and secure, you can lay your new tiles onto vinyl tiles which should be coated with a PVA sealant or tile adhesive primer and allowed to dry completely. Carpet or carpet tiles. Remove all carpet, carpet tiles, underlay and fixings before preparing to lay a tiled floor. Okay, so now I have a sound and flat surface. What do I do about tiling around obstructions such as a water pipe or a waste pipe? Don't worry, we will be covering that later. We'll show you how to fit your tiles around typical obstructions such as pipework or a pedestal. Some obstructions should be boxed in, such as pipework running across a wall close to the floor, and then tiled up to for the neatest finish. Right. First of all, let's work out how many tiles you're going to have to buy. You'll make a simple plan of the floor and then mark on it those areas that you're not going to tile, such as a built-in bath or a shower tray. And don't forget to include additional areas such as an alcove or a bay. Okay, so here's my plan of the floor area. Oh good, yes. Now, multiply the length and the width together to give you the overall surface area in square metres and then deduct from that those areas that you're not going to tile. Okay, so I've worked out that we need nine square metres. Yes, that looks right, but double check your measurements again, and when you're happy, add 10% to the overall area. That will allow for cutting tiles at the edges and for any breakages. Alternatively, most B&Q tile packs include a tile calculator chart, which adds the 10% on for you. Okay, so when I buy my tiles, is it easy to work out how many boxes or packs I'll need? Yes, it is. Look on the box and it will tell you how many square metres each box will cover. And if you have any unopened boxes left over when you're finished, then you can return those to B&Q for a refund. When you're buying tiles, you should always check that the batch numbers match across all the packs of tiles that you buy, just as you would for wallpaper. This minimises any risk of shade variations. Okay. And what about working out how much adhesive and grout I'll need? Again, no problem. Look on the pack. All B&Q tile adhesive and grout clearly states how many square metres each pack will cover. Obviously we're going to use a ready mixed adhesive and grout that is suitable for a wooden floor, but what if I need one for a concrete floor or a different colour grout? Well, always use the appropriate adhesive 
for the floor surface to which you're going to fix tiles. B&Q do a wide range of adhesives and grouts, including different colours. Not all adhesives and grouts are ready mixed. And remember, not all tile adhesive can be used as grout. So read the packet carefully. Right. You can buy powdered adhesive or grout and mix the solution yourself following the instructions on the packet. It's completely up to you. However, some people do find that the ready mix products are easier to use. Yeah. Finally, don't forget, as well as the tile adhesive and grout, you'll need some spacers too. Are spacers for wall tiles and floor tiles the same? No. Spacers for wall tiles and floor tiles are different sizes, so make sure you buy the right ones. Once they're in position and the tiles are grouted, then the spacers are completely hidden. OK, so now I've got all my tiles, my spacers, my ready-mixed adhesive and grout. Where do I start? Along this wall? No, you mustn't start by laying tiles along either one wall or another. Walls are very rarely straight and parallel and any imperfections will show immediately. Floor tiles must be laid in relation to the central point of a room. You start from this point and work out to the walls. And when you do this, your tile floor will look symmetrical and there'll be no narrow tiles to cut and fix to the edges. It will be a really professional job. First of all, let's find the center point of the room. Measure across one wall at one end Calculate its midpoint and mark this on the floor. Repeat this process along the same wall but at the other end and mark the midpoint on the floor. Now you need to draw a line to join these two points. If your room is small, you may have a straight edge or batten long enough. But if not, then use a piece of string and a nail. It's a simple and quick solution, but of course can only be used on a wooden subfloor. First, fix the nail in position into your midpoint. Tie a piece of thin string to the nail and then stretch the string to the second midpoint. Hold the string taut and then run a pencil along the string. This is now one of your guidelines. Now do the same for the other wall, where the two lines cross is your midpoint. We'll use this centre point to position the first tile, which is known as the key tile, and then lay the tiles from the key tile to the walls. Where we place this key tile depends on how the tiles fit across the room, but as always we do not want to be left with a thin strip of tiles at the wall or skirting board, it will look terrible and the tile may not stick down well. So, let's lay the key tile on the center point like this, and then dry lay tiles across the room to the wall.
Right, now that we've dry laid the tiles, we can clearly see whether we need to change the position of the key tile before we go any further. Right. Because we need to end up with the tiles nicely balanced in the room. As you can see, over in that corner is quite a nice gap. Yeah. And it balances with the gap in that corner. Oh, yeah. So that looks fine. That's a nice broad gap and easy to cut. So that's fine. But when you come and look here, you can see that that's very narrow, which gives us problems. So does that cause a problem? Yes, two problems, actually. First of all, because it's a narrow cut, you end up trying to cut a narrow piece of tile, which is difficult, and it will be difficult to stick it down in place. Yeah. Secondly, because it's narrow, it will draw your eye to the narrowness and you'll emphasise the yeah, problem. I see. So how do we overcome that then? By moving the key tile half a tile's width further up. Imagine oh, all the tiles right. moved up with it yeah. and you'll see that that will give us a nice broad cut here. And if you see at the opposite end, take that tile away and you'll end up with a nice broad cut yeah. at the far end as well, which is balanced. So we'll balance both sides and balance the both ends and visually it will look good. Excellent. It's a bit of a juggling act, but it's well worth carrying out to get that nicely balanced finish. Yeah, I can see that. Okay? Yep. So, we now need to reposition the key tile. Okay. So if I take these away, just put them off to one side for a minute. Yeah. We will eventually move all the tiles off before we start. Yeah. We're now going to move this. So this is the key tile. This is the key tile. We'll move it half a tile's width, just by eye, but make sure it's accurately lined up. And then mark its new position. Yes? Yep. There you go. Thank you. Now that's the position of the key tile. I will extend that line and we've got the line also in that direction to lay against. So should I start tiling along this line here? Yes, you will now be able to fix whole tiles in place along this line, starting with the key tile, and from there across the whole of the floor. We call those field tiles. Right. Until you reach the edges of the room when you're going to have to cut tiles to fit. Yeah. It's really quick and easy to lay field tiles. Great. Before we start fixing the tiles to the floor, let's take a moment to unpack all the tiles that you've bought so that we can examine them for any defects or problems and then to mix them up as we stack them to one side. I understand why you check each floor tile for defects, but why do you have to mix them up? If you are buying ceramic tiles, there may be subtle differences in shade. Right. In the case of natural stone tiles like these, you can decide what mix of unique colours and patterns you like best. And finally, it's a good idea to allow natural stone tiles to dry out thoroughly before sealing or fixing them down. Why is that? Any moisture in the tile might affect its final colour. Seal the face and edges of natural stone tiles like these and also polished porcelain tiles. And don't forget to seal the cut edge of any type of tile. So is the sealing of the tile before laying really necessary? And what sort of sealant would I use? Well, you use the tile sealant, right. and yes, it is really necessary. Okay. You do not want to mark the surface of the tile with adhesive or grout while you're laying the floor. Once you've laid the floor, you will be applying tile sealant again to make a long-lasting water and stain resistant finish. Okay. Start in the centre of the room with a key tile here. Put on your protective gloves and mix the adhesive thoroughly. Scoop out some adhesive onto the end of the notched spreader like this and dollop it onto the floor. It's quite messy. And then spread it across the floor. Work away from the key tile and the guideline 
and apply the adhesive with horizontal strokes, holding the spreader at an angle of about 45 degrees. Apply no more than about one square meter at a time, or the adhesive may go hard before you apply the tiles. It really is important to use a notched spreader that is designed for floor tiling. The ridges of adhesive made by the notched spreader ensure that there's just the right amount of adhesive behind each tile. They'll be sure to lie flat this way. The notch sizes in a floor tiling spreader are larger than those for wall tiles. So make sure you're using the right spreader. If you are using a combination spreader with both notch sizes, then make sure you're using the correct side. Keep a damp sponge or cloth handy, you're bound to make a bit of a mess, so wipe up as you go along. Right, that's enough adhesive to start with. Place the key tile into position and press it firmly in place with a slight twist to bed it in place and to ensure that there's no air trapped underneath. Look at the area you're about to tile and decide which direction you're going to tile so that you do not have to lean or step on newly laid tiles. It's best to leave the tiles for 24 hours before you walk on them, so don't trap yourself into a corner. Now, continue laying tiles to the walls, fitting a spacer at the corners of each tile, or, as we're doing here, like a peg on the face of the tile, until you've completed a row of whole tiles. Check from time to time that the tiles are flat and level with a spirit level and you may need to tamp them down with a rubber mallet like this. Now continue to lay tiles across the adhesive until you have completed this section and then repeat across the rest of the room. You will inevitably drop adhesive onto tiles so use your damp sponge or cloth to wipe it off immediately. The adhesive will be very hard to remove once it's set and also Make sure you remove any excess adhesive from the floor around the room as you work. We've now completed a floor of field tiles. We can't go any further without cutting edging tiles. So let's clear up as we need to leave the adhesive to set for 24 hours before walking on the tiles. When you come to fit the edging tiles, don't just measure up one space and assume that all your edging tiles will be the same size along the wall. Most walls are not truly straight, so it's better to measure and cut each tile in turn. I'm a bit nervous about measuring accurately. Is there a foolproof technique? Well, there are a number of ways. You can take separate measurements left and right on the tile using a tape measure. Or there's a really simple technique that I like using another tile to mark up the tile to be cut. Watch this. Take a whole tile and hold it in place over the whole tile in the row. Now, take another whole tile and place it up against the wall or skirting board, but make sure you allow a spacer's width gap. Now, mark the tile beneath with a tile marker like this. This is the tile you'll cut. So remove the two tiles, cut the marked up tile and see if it fits accurately. Okay, we've cut all our straight edging tiles and laid them in the correct places, yep. so let's start fixing them down. Okay, but there's not actually a lot of space against the wall to apply the tile adhesive. Shouldn't we use a smaller spreader? No need. What we'll do is use the narrow end of the spreader and apply the adhesive 
direct to the back of the tile, like so. I see. And then drop it into place using spacers as necessary to make sure it is lined up correctly. Great. There we go. Shall we carry on and finish the rest of the tiles? Yeah. Okay, so now we've cut and put into position all our straight edging tiles. I see we've come to an outside corner. So how do we cut and measure this accurately? Quite simple and straightforward. Take the tile that you intend to be cutting and place it on either of these two tiles, like so, making sure that the edge of the tile is accurately in line with the edge of the tile underneath yeah. and butt it up to the wall. Right. Then take your tile marker and mark where the wall touches the tile, but don't forget to allow for the width of the spacer. Right. Then do exactly the same on this tile here. Mm -hmm. Again, making certain that the edges align accurately. Butt it up to the wall. And once again, mark the position where the wall touches the tile, but allow for the spacer. Mm -hmm. Then, use a straight edge for accuracy and draw a line like so and then draw the second line from the other edge. You can then cut along those two lines, take away that and there's your tile ready to fit into place. Great. So I see now we've reached another obstruction. So how do we fit the tile around the door surround? That's quite straightforward. What we need to do is to cut away enough of the door surround to allow the tile to slide underneath it. Right. The easiest way to do that is to take an off cut of wood that's the same depth as a tile plus the adhesive underneath. Yeah. And then place that up close to the door surround, take a sharp saw, and holding the blade flat, just Should have done it. There. Now, all we need to do is to cut the tile to fit round the corner. Oh, I see. So it's similar to the outside corner, but just a bit smaller. That's exactly right, yes. So here we have the cut tile, and as you can see, it slides neatly into place. I've just had to cut away the bottom of the door stop to accommodate the tile as well. Yeah. And then you will just continue to lay your tiles. Yeah, that looks really great, but how do I finish off the edging over the threshold? Well, B&Q stock a wide variety of threshold strips suitable for separating stone from carpet or tile to wooden floor, for instance. Right, I see.
Right, we've completed all the tile edging and we've left it to dry for 24 hours, so now we're ready to start grouting. Okay, but is there more than one type of grout? Yes, grout's available in a premix form or powder form and in many different colours. Oh, great. You should thoroughly stir the premix grout before you start. Use a grout float to spread the grout across the tiles and then work the grout into the joints like this. Make long diagonal strokes and work quickly to complete the floor as the grout will soon begin to harden. Immediately go over the tiles with a damp sponge to remove any excess grout before it hardens, but make sure you don't drag any grout from the joints. Right, so we've finished the grouting and we've given the tiles an initial clean down. So is there anything else left to do? Well, we could use this grout profiler to neaten up the joints, which would give us a really professional looking finish. But I see the tiles are coated with a thin powdery residue. How do I remove this? That's simple. Just wipe away the grout residue with a soft, clean cloth. Right. And do I need to seal these natural stone tiles again? Yes, once the grout has dried for 24 hours and you've given the tiles a final clean down, then apply another coat of tile sealant. Okay. And don't forget, when we refit the skirting board, you'll need to seal the gap between the skirting board and the floor with some flexible sealant. Okay. So as this is my bathroom, I'm going to be cleaning the tiles quite regularly. Will I need to reseal them? You may need to reseal from time to time. B&Q sells specific products for sealing and cleaning natural stone tiles. Right. All glazed tiles are protected by their glaze, so they won't need sealing, and in use, all they'll need is a clean down from time to time with warm water and detergent. Don't use abrasive cleaners or abrasive sponges on glazed tiles, as they may scratch the glaze. Once you've laid or fixed all the field tiles or hole tiles, then you're going to need to be cutting tiles, either around the edges or around obstructions. Okay. Cutting tiles is perfectly straightforward, and B&Q sell a wide range of hand and power tools which are easy to use. Okay. Are there any differences in the tools and techniques for cutting glazed tiles and stone tiles? That's a very good point. Yes, there are differences. You can cut glazed tiles with either a hand-operated tile cutter like this, or a powered tile cutter like this. But for stone tiles, we recommend a powered tile cutter. 
The hand-operated cutter works on a scoring and snapping principle, where you break through the glaze by scoring once only, and then you snap the tile along the scored line. The powered cutter cuts the tile with a diamond wheel cooled by recirculating water and makes light work of cutting for any tiling projects and some models are designed to cut bevel edges. It's ideal for cutting external corners like this as well. For small curved or circular shaped cuts, you could use a tile saw or a jigsaw with a tile cutting blade like this. But whatever tile cutter you use, always keep one of these handy. It's a tile file and is the perfect tool for removing rough edges from tiles as well as for making small shape changes. What type of safety equipment would you recommend that we use for cutting tiles? Well, always use the appropriate safety equipment. So, for all tile cutting jobs, you should wear gloves and eye protection. Right. And if you're using a power cutting tool, then you should use an RCD for electrical protection, use ear defenders, and wear a dust mask. Okay. Can you show me how to use this manual tile cutter to cut this glazed tile? Yes, no problem. You'd first of all measure the tile, and then you'd set the guide to that measurement, and then you'd place the tile onto the cutter, glazed side up, against the guide. Right. Press down steadily on the handle, and push the scorer forward to score a line. Make sure you score the line only once, and then press down firmly on the handle, to snap the tile along the scoring line, like this. It mm. does pay to practice with offcuts, so would you like to try? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's really easy. As long as you score just once and maintain a steady even pressure, the tile should cut accurately every time. It will. This seems really great for cutting straight lines, but is it any good for cutting internal corners or curves? No, no. For that, you'll need to either use a very simple but effective tile saw, which as you can see has a round blade, which makes it easy to change direction as you saw, or a jigsaw with a suitable tile cutter blade. Right. And don't forget that a tile file is useful for smoothing the edge of a cut tile mm -hmm. or for making final adjustments to the exact fit of a cut tile. Right. Can you show me how to use the tile saw? Yes, no problem. I'll just go there. Okay. I'll just clamp the tile into position. There's probably a guideline for you to cut to. Yeah. But simply, And of course, you need to finish off and get the curve exactly right with the tile file. I see.
Another way to measure, mark and cut shapes is to use a tile shaping template like this. I'll show you how to use it here when cutting floor tiles around a pedestal. Lay all the whole tiles up to and around the pedestal. We'll use the same technique as for marking up edging tiles to find our start points. Place a whole tile over the nearest tile here and slide another tile over this tile until it meets the pedestal. Mark this measurement on the tile below with a tile marker. Now hold the tile shaping template in place against the edge of the tile here and slide it against the pedestal making sure the tile shaping template stays in line with the edge of the tile. Transfer the shape to the tile you will cut. Now repeat the process for this edge, like this. Then join up the marks. Mark on the tile the area to cut away and then cut the tile to shape with a suitable hand or power tool. Offer up the cut tile and make minor adjustments to fit with the tile file. You will probably need to cut two or more tiles to fit around a pedestal like this. Once fixed in place and grouted, apply a silicon sealant between the tiles and the pedestal.